What's up, dudes? Drew's back with more goddamn metal for your ass. It's gonna kick off another fucking video. Viewer response here, but before we do, check out this goddamn badass Morton red shirt. Two sided. Fucking Ernest Borg 9 is fucking Corbus in the Devil's Reign. Classic 70s horror B movie, man. Evil as fuck indeed. Again, two sided. Yellow on black. Go check out Morton Red and his fucking band camp over there, man, because this thing is fucking sweet. The pictures don't do it justice. This thing just screams, oozes badass metal across the fucking YouTube stream here. So definitely go check your, uh, go check that out. Grab yourself one. Uh, I did mention when I first got it, I put it in that channel shirt uh, video that I did. By the way, Drusen for channel shirt still available worldwide. In the link in the description, uh, it'll uh, send you to that fucking video where I'll tell you exactly how you can go about getting yours. But yeah, dude, this, this shirt's fucking amazing. I'm glad to have it. And I'm actually, I wanted the one that was kind of like, um, you know, had, he had a mess up with the batch or whatever. But I was like, oh, dude, that thing still looks cool as fuck. I'm actually kind of glad I just stepped the game up because, dude, this thing is fucking great. Spec fucking tacular. Anyways, we got some goddamn questions here. Our Goslin Cheerleader, 1865. Hey, Drew, or anyone else in the comments, how do y'all wash your metal shirts? Just inside out or other other tips? I know it's a dumb question, but I still need the answer. Well, my friend, the correct answer is to get yourself a woman who will wash your clothes. Oh, damn, how to get banned on fucking YouTube. I'm kidding, of course, but seriously, my wife washes mine, and I don't think she does anything special with any of it. Uh, I never did, back when I was doing clothes a lot. And yeah, I did laundry every once in a while, but... No, I just always just take them and throw them in, and I wash them like anything else. I mean, the only thing I've got over the years is maybe a slight fade in the black, but I don't do anything special. Maybe some guys do, but I also don't spend outrageous amounts of money on fucking shirts. So I've, it's never been an issue for me, but uh, anyone else in the comments here, if you have any other tips that don't involve, you know, fucking sexist comments that will get you banned off of YouTube, be sure to uh, share them with our friend, the Argoslin cheerleader here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything special to it, at least for me. I have banned shirts that are more than 20 years old, and, I mean, yeah, I can notice that the color's faded, but, I mean, god damn, you watch anything two, three hundred times, uh, I would imagine the color's gonna fade a little bit. But it's never been a big issue for me. Bright Moon in the Night 2111. Really like what you said about War Metal being about strength. Been super depressed and felt suicidal a lot before, but I really dug how bluntly you put it. You were completely right. Kind of inspired me a little. Haha, ha, to stop being a bitch. Honestly, and I, I responded to this, dude. This is probably one of the best comments I think I've ever got. Look, I love all the comments that people, you know, when they recommend bands, when they say nice things, like, dude, love your channel, instant sub, like, that sort of shit. I mean, it, it makes you feel good. But hearing somebody that, like, actually went through fucking depression and felt suicidal kind of get a pick-me-up from something that I've uh, said, uh, dude, I nothing, well, nothing has that I've come across in the comment section has had that kind of a, a, just a feeling of just being like, fuck yeah, man. I mean, if, if there's any kind of thing that I would want to put into somebody, it's like, dude, don't get me wrong. I mean, I don't think life has any meaning outside of yourself in the grand cosmic scheme of the universe. Uh, I don't believe in the God, gods or devils or the supernatural or, or any of that kind of shit. I, I'm pretty sure when you die, that's going to be it. But dude, when you think about it, when you really break that down, mentally digest that, it makes all of this that much more fucking special because it's so goddamn finite. Like, no matter how futile existence might be and how dark a lot of these, even in metal, a lot of these themes and stuff are, it's kind of like, I just see that as a strength builder. It's like, yeah, dude, there's all this horrible shit, but you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to goddamn keep going on. I'm going to keep fucking, you know, you, you got to keep hopping the fucking hurdles that life throws at you, man. And I understand I've never been in a situation where I've dealt with depression or I've dealt with suicidal thoughts or anything like that. And uh, any of you dudes or ladies, you know, the 0.5% of this channel that are fucking females, uh, any of you that are going through anything like that, I mean, I would recommend that you, you seek help, man. If watching these videos make you feel better, that's fucking great because just the idea of that makes me even feel better about doing the fucking videos, man. But, yeah, I mean, get help. I would say nine, 99 times out of 100, your life is worth fucking living, man. Now, there are some people who have, there's no reason they should even fucking be alive, but I don't think that's a lot of you guys. That's for people that are, you know, sociopathic, getting off on hurting other people, shit like that. 
fuck those people. People who have, you know, aggressed to that fucking standpoint, fuck those guys. I don't give a fuck about them. They don't deserve to goddamn live. But for the people that are just like, man, some shit just piles up in your life sometimes. Just one thing after another after another. Sometimes it fucking snowballs and you just feel kind of helpless and hopeless. To me, especially extreme metal, was always just about, like, fucking strength, man. It's all about fucking power making you feel ten foot tall and fucking bulletproof. Fuck the world and everything in it. So that's kind of the way that I look at it. So, like, for an outsider, I think a lot of outsiders would look at metal and see it, as, you know, back in the 80s, apparently, this was just, like, a huge thing uh, with just, like, oh, this is detrimental to kids. It's going to cause all kinds of, uh, you know, lack of self-esteem and self-worth and stuff like that. But what you find out, and I have actually was looking at studies the other day that they've done over the past few decades, and it apparently is the exact opposite effect. Most people that listen to heavy metal, according to the you know the studies that I browse through on fucking Google and shit, I didn't do deep dive research or nothing, but that people who listen to this type of music come out feeling more fucking confident, stronger, tougher, more of a mental edge about them. More of, I mean, it's, it's something outside the mainstream, so that probably ties into the individuality aspect. So... Hell yeah, man. Stay fucking tough. Stay goddamn strong, man. Keep blasting the kind of music that makes you feel that way. I mean, listen to what you like. I know there's a lot of people that listen to the depressive or suicidal, like black metal and stuff. But I think even for a lot of them, there's something they get out of that that is strengthening for them. So it's really fucking cool, man. Uh, cool to hear from you again. Fucking love this comment. Thanks for sharing that, Bright Moon. Let him volter. Drucifer. Hey, just wanted to ask off topic, where is this whole pizza thrash shit I heard of? And is municipal municipal ways considered one because of their party style lyrics and humor? If you can consider DRI somewhat the same thing, but I don't know. Another band I consider for that unserious thrash would have to be uh, Gamma Bomb or Lich King. Educate me, brother. Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much got it. Uh, municipal Waste is kind of the poster child these days for what is called pizza thrash. And it's hilarious because, you know, the terms pizza thrash, party thrash, a lot of it refers to, like, crossover bands, yeah, I've noticed. Especially because a lot of crossover bands, when they're not talking about politics, they're talking about partying. So that's kind of what it means. So party thrash, pizza thrash, kind of funny. I remember the first time I heard pizza thrash, or at least it clicked to me, that like, my drummer that's in uh, my band, Infuriator, because we do speed metal kind of almost crossover thrashy style but the lyrics are more dark um <clears throat> yeah he he had mentioned one day like pizza thrash and just instantly I, I knew exactly what the fuck he was talking about i was like you're talking about like municipal waste and i even he mentioned lich king and i'm familiar with them as well he's like yeah that kind of you know i guess for me i almost think like generic kind of crossover thrash but Municipal Waste is kind of the poster child for that. And there's plenty of Municipal Waste shit that I do like. DRI, the last Infuriator show, we opened for DRI. DRI, I would say, is kind of in that as well. It's just, it's thrash with what I would call maybe like juvenile or dumb lyrics. And I don't mean that as an insult, because sometimes that shit's cool. There's plenty of that stuff that I like. I, mean, I fucking, uh, a few live shows ago, I was rocking Ludacrist. I mean, Ludacrist is in that crossover camp. Is that really pizza thrash? I don't know. It's kind of a fine line, but it's basically that. It's the, the thrash bands that are really kind of just generic, straight-up thrash, maybe a little bit of that crossover edge, and all of their shit is about partying, you know, smoking weed, drinking beer, hence pizza thrash, you know, eating pizza. Imagine it kind of like a, the kind of thrash music you would expect the Ninja Turtles to like. That's kind of what I think. Like Cowabunga Bro, you know, with the fucking visor or the hat flipped up. It's just kind of like that. That's how I've always seen Pizza Thrash. Next up, Jesus Loves Death Metal, 4580. To be honest, I always thought war metal was just bands like Warbringer. So just thrash bands singing about war, but I did check out the band Conqueror and the album War Cult Supremacy kicks ass. My favorite song on it is Kingdom Against Kingdom. Yes, fantastic fucking album. Actually, you know, because I've had that on cassette for a long time. Finally got my hands on the CD of it. it, it it's just fucking great. It's another one of those workout bands that... I can just put that fucker on and listen to it all the way through. And again, just this feeling of fucking, like, you know, energy, power, that sort of shit. That's what I go to metal for. I don't go to metal to fucking feel like, oh, man, what was me, you know, my life so bad and all that kind of stuff. I, I just honestly don't entertain that those thoughts for any kind of fucking music. And if I start kind of getting that vibe from bands and singers and stuff, I don't even fucking listen to it. But most metal, for me, doesn't really have that. For me, a big turnoff to a lot of like popular music and, and country and uh, fucking, you know, some of the shit that I just hear on the radio at work or going in and out of stores or whatever, 
is it gives me that vibe. Like, dude, this shit just sounds weak as piss. Like, how do people listen to this and not feel fucking miserable in their lives? Which is funny because that's kind of what a lot of those people might think about metal. Like, if I play for any average jack-off walking around your local Walmart, I play War Cult Supremacy for them, they'd be like, oh, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? How can you like this? But that's seriously how I feel listening to, like, pop country. I'm like, dude, how can you guys listen to this? I mean, a song here or there I can understand, but, like, dude, this is what... This is your music. This is like your go-to. This is what you guys listen to every fucking day. How can you sit around and drink beer and listen to this and not want to like eat a fucking gun barrel, man? This shit is depressing as fuck, dude. It's all sad, slow. You know, it's just everything sounds fucking sad, man. I could do a dose here and there of it, but like how the fuck are you regularly digesting this fucking garbage? Still, so, yeah, war metal is I, I used to think that as well. I used to just consider like war metal, yeah, like war themed metal. Then you find out it's its own genre style. And I fucking love the genre style. And I love the bands that are like thrash bands. Like you mentioned, Warbringer. I have a lyric video on this channel of Enemy of the State. You know, talking about uh, Soviet Russia under Stalin and the gulags and all that stuff. Which is fucking fantastic. And that video is really good. I, I have to toot my own horn a little bit there. But yeah, I mean, I, I love war themes in, in metal are probably one of my favorites. I would say probably top two. I mean, I love the evil shit, the satanic shit, but I love the war theme stuff uh, all throughout. I, uh, most of the lyric videos I've done on this channel, in fact, I'm trying to think of any that aren't, they're all war themed. I did Slayer's Blood Red off of Seasons in the Abyss. That's, again, about uh, communist China. Uh, Enemies of the State by Warbringer. I did Death or Glory by Motorhead, which is just about the concept of a soldier Throughout all of human history, all these different wars that have been fought. That video I fucking love. Uh, Metallica's version of Blitzkrieg. I have a lyric video for that. So, yeah, I'm just very much into war-themed metal. It doesn't have to be just war metal. I just, I like war themes. But, yeah, dude, war metal is its own fucking thing. Conqueror's goddamn great. If you are uh, into that and you like that kind of shit, I have plenty of content on this channel about fucking war metal. And last but not least, Mr. Rodney Barr, 5735. Question for the next viewer response. I love listening to extreme metal. It's my favorite music to listen to. I'm mainly into thrash, death, and black metal. But even I have days where I get burnt out and need to listen to more laid-back metal and classic rock bands for a while. Then I get excited about wanting to listen to extreme music again. Do you ever get like that, or do you go full throttle blasting 24-7, 365? Now, I... I think we all get like that I don't want to speak for everybody else but I mean for me 90 plus percent of the time it is extreme metal that's what I'm listening to but in that other 10 percent of the time there's plenty of times I want to kind of switch it up and also when I'm by myself it's like 99 percent fucking metal or extreme metal but you know there's times like when I'm with my wife or something like that and we're going out somewhere I'll put on classic rock if I'm hanging out with uh and it going somewhere with my mom or my dad or even hanging out with my brother or whatever, the metal that I'll listen to is this, the metal that borders on classic rock. Like, I don't go over and hang out with my brother who listens to country music regularly and put on fucking Conqueror. I don't go put on Proclamation. Yeah, you know, I would... I, one of these days, I'm going to go over there and put on Morton Red and see what he thinks. But, he, you know, he don't listen to that kind of stuff. My family would just be like, dude, what, what are you doing? Why are you listening to the crazy shit again? When I go over there, it's like Zeppelin, Sabbath, we can go Dio, Judas Priest, you know, that kind of shit. Shit that I still fucking love, but that is kind of a, an in-between that, you know, they can jam to. I mean, I love all kinds of shit that's not even metal. I like a lot of blues stuff, like Jeff Healy from Canada, the blind guitar player from Roadhouse. I love that fucking guy. I love Buckethead. I've mentioned Buckethead before. Buckethead is kind of borders on being a metal player, but he's so all over, across the board that he plays all kinds of shit. Now, I mean, ZZ Top, Zeppelin, Rush... Uh, ACDC, I mean, all that classic rock stuff, I think is fucking great. Do I listen to it regularly? No, I mean, most of it I've just heard like a trillion fucking times. So there's different stuff by different bands that I'll, I'll go jam and some of it's just kind of overplayed or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I definitely listen to classic rock from time to time, especially classic rock. Outside of metal, classic rock is the number one go-to. After that, some blues stuff. Uh, I even like some blues stuff from the fucking Depression era. Like old shit like Sunhouse, Skip James, Booker White, uh, Blind Lemon Jefferson, shit like that. Uh, you know, Muddy Waters, obviously, from the, the old school like Chicago shit. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of good 
things that are not metal. It's just I do tend to listen to metal the most often. And I'll guarantee you, if you ask around for metalheads, do they listen to nothing but like raw black metal all the fucking time? I mean, there's a part of me that's like, oh, there might be some people like that. But there's also a part of me that thinks like anybody who says that is probably being fake. That would just be my guess because I don't think anybody listens to one fucking thing all the goddamn time. Because how does that not get old? Anything, even the shit that I love, I don't want to hear it all the time. I remember back when like they, we first started getting where you could put like program phones or program phones, program uh, music into your cell phones, and you could use it as like your alarms and stuff. And I used to do that for like my wake up alarms. And after hearing that, like just within a week, being woken up to the same song, I never wanted to hear the song again. I, and I would change the songs around, and then eventually I would get burned out. And I'm like, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to use the default fucking ringtone because if I'm hearing something I like all the time, especially when it's waking me up, which is already pissing me off because I had to be woken up, I start to not like the fucking song. So it's just any time you have too much of something or an overindulgence of something, you start getting burned out on it. So I don't know how anybody is listening to any one thing all the fucking time. You have to switch it up every once in a while. But yeah, I mean, to, to give a broader answer to that yeah like it really is 90 plus percent of the time i am listening to extreme metal but that's also not 24 7 365 is it because it's only 90 percent of the time anyways that does it for this one guys uh thanks for fucking hanging out checking out the video man i've got uh, more shit gonna do in the future obviously got <clears throat> the package here from aaron from goat throne records uh, about to start my review on that i uh, still got a couple albums there to listen to he, he said some really good quality shit Going to do that. And also, at the time you're seeing this, tonight, it will be tonight, February 3rd, on MOD's channel, we're going to be doing a live stream talking about American war metal. That's right. And I think he said something to me, sent me a text last night, saying something happened with the last live stream we did, and we're probably going to have to recover some of that ground of Canadian war metal. But we will work that out. But that will be February the 3rd. That should be, at the time I'm posting this, that should be tonight. Saturday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, I think is what we worked out. We're going to talk about American War Metal over there. So be sure to come out and check that shit out, man. Talk some shit in the chat. We'll have a fucking good time. But until the next one, keep it goddamn heavy. Keep it fucking mean and offensive. It's the way metal's supposed to be. I'll see all you sons of bitches in the next one. Later.